There's got to be some way I can work this off. No. Some, some way I can make it up no. to you. No. I've come to talk with you again. Oh, stop it, you. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> What's up guys, it's your boy Benny. Whatever goes around, comes around. And there seems to be quite a bit of coming around these days. A brand new bombshell report from the Daily Mail says that Nikki Haley had multiple affairs, cheated on her husband whilst he was deployed. Oh no. Let's read the allegations and I'll begin this by simply saying what I know. And what I know is that I've spoken with people inside of the media and people inside of the presidential election cycle that know a lot of things. And I've spoke to people inside of South Carolina politics and they all affirm to me well before this article, which was published seconds ago, went up that this is true. I didn't ask because I didn't actually know, but these people have told me that Nikki Haley have, has had, uh, confirmed affairs, uh, and the, the and they know because they've either worked for her or worked with her or are aware of these things and have effectively the factual evidence of it all. And so that's what I've been told. Okay. I'm not prepared to like, I guess, you know, show you the evidence right now, but I suppose if it's being published, it will all come out. Eventually the truth shall set you free. Nikki Haley did cheat on her husband, Michael had affairs with her comms consultant and a married South Carolina lobbyist before she became governor, sworn affidavits and new witnesses claim. Uh-oh. Nikki Haley, 51, uh, declined to comment and denied the claims that she cheated on her husband, Michael, before he became South Carolina. She became South Carolina in 2010, saying that she's been 100% faithful. Never something you want to have to, you know, argue. Now, multiple GOP insiders tell the Daily Mail that they were intimately aware of Haley's infidelity at the time, saying it was totally out in the open. Communications consultant Will Folks, 49, and lobbyist Larry Marchant, 61, both signed affidavits in 2010 alleging that they had a sexual relationship with Haley. Oh, so the guys who she was cheating on her husband with have signed the affidavit. Oh, my goodness. Presidential candidate Nikki Haley false, uh, falsely denied cheating on her husband when she was accused of engaging in two extramarital affairs during her gubernatorial campaign. So it looks like they're dr digging up uh, some stuff that's already, that, that's like from 10 years ago plus, but nonetheless relevant today because Nikki Haley is the only person that's really running, running against Donald Trump anymore. She's polling approximately 30% against Donald Trump in New Hampshire, which is the most anyone's polled against Trump in any individual state. I predict Donald Trump will still go on to win New Hampshire by a landslide, but nonetheless, Nikki, you asked for these kind of news cycles. New witnesses have come forward telling the Daily Mail that Haley's denials of the two alleged 2008 affairs are false and that the supposed trysts were blazon and widely known among South Carolina politicos. Will Forks, 49, and Larry Marchant, 61, both signed affidavits in 2010 alleging that they had a sexual relationship with Haley. When the contents of the affidavits were described by to major news outlets at the time, this was the first time they've been published outside of Folk's own document, which he published on his blog. Haley 51 denied at the time, saying she was 100% faithful to the father of her two children, uh, Michael Haley, who was deployed in Afghanistan with the National Guard in 2012. Haley now frequently cites him as the reason for her presidential candidacy. So this is uh, what is an older photo of Nikki Haley, for, uh, uh, but nonetheless, these are the two men. Well, let's go ahead and read. Apparently, uh, they have the affidavit now. And, uh, well, Nikki Haley's husband, who she changed his name. Uh, is she taller than her husband? Ugh, never a good sign. She changed his name, by the way. It's like an absolutely wild, wild story. Oh, here's the affidavit. There it is. Okay. I'm over the age of 18 competent to make the following statement. This is the affidavit that uh, of my own personal knowledge, I'm a resident of South Carolina. I was employed by South Carolina representative at the time, Nikki Haley in 2017. Uh, and I engaged in inappropriate physical relationship that included numerous instances of inappropriate sexual contact. Haley and I shared our first kiss while sitting in a parked car outside of a restaurant. Uh, this kiss took place then. And he goes on, you know, I guess you guys can read it for yourself. You wish to know the, uh, the, the details, um, 
Representative Haley eventually backed off. Phone records confirm we remain in contact. During one of the late night phone calls, Haley informed me that she wanted to confide uh, in Eleanor Kitzman, who was serving as the director for South Carolina Department of Insurance, about the affair because she was hurt and no one, uh, no one would talk to her about it. It's very interesting because this whole Eleanor Kitzman has come up in another in, uh, comment that has been sort of resurfaced about Nikki Haley. Uh, Nikki Haley is a big fan of infidelity. And how I can say that with assurance because Nikki Haley has told me that in her own words and in her own writings. The most incestuous and utterly debauched and utterly, you know, utterly depraved president we've ever had was Bill Clinton, who used the White House as his own personal Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Nikki Haley is a big fan of the Clintons, though. What does that say about her moral character? Oh, and Eleanor Kitzman comes up. This was the this was the frenemy that Nikki Haley went with to watch Hillary Clinton and oogle at her and say that she's my inspiration. To lie to win, you don't deserve to win. I never said Hillary Clinton was an inspiration. You know, I often say that the reason I got into politics was because of Hillary Clinton. I didn't know her, although I had met her several years before at a women's professional event in Greenville, South Carolina. At that event, she had inspired me to run for office and make my voice heard. And in some ways, she remained inspiring. She is actually the reason that I made the jump. Because you write about her being a big inspiration for you. I went with my friend Eleanor Kitzman to a firm and leadership program where Hillary Clinton was speaking. Oh, and I walked out of there and I said, I'm running for office. Good old Eleanor Kitzman, back at it again. Well, Miss Kissman was apparently the confidant who knows all about this. Look forward to people actually looking into it. I mean, listen, you know, like, is this is this disqualifying from a constitutional standpoint? No. Is it disqualifying from a moral standpoint? Because Nikki Haley is trying to run on this whole, like, I love my husband so much. We're such a family of service. He's such a, he's a military man. I changed his name. She changed his name from Bill to Michael. She literally straight up changed his name. Well, yeah. The, the, on that level, then it, this is an absolutely worthwhile article to look into because it does show you the moral character of a person whose hero is Hillary Clinton, who kind of did the, the same kind of things here. Nikki Haley, of course, as we've stated from the article, has denied it. But nonetheless, um, well, I guess you're she she's perhaps going to have to deny it once more. Because this this is now brand new. This article is out brand new uh, from the Daily Mail saying that they've confirmed it. And they're publishing now the documentation about it. You hate to see it, honestly. But I'll tell you this. Um, it is – politics is a degenerate and despicable game. And the people in politics are grotesque. Many of these people are truly grotesque individuals. Uh, after a night together and dinner and drinks with other participants of the conference, Haley and I returned to a hotel room together. We went back to her room where we had sexual intercourse and I spent the remainder of the evening. I left her room at approximately 6 a.m. I came forward publicly on this matter only after being contacted by the press uh, and hearing Representative Haley claim that she had been 100% faithful to her husband. So these are the guys, these are literally the guys who she was allegedly having an affair with, writing this, signing this, getting it notarized. Same thing here. A notarized signature. I mean, these, these are the kind of stuff that like you bring to court, right? Under penalty of perjury. A lot of people saw her sitting on laps, wrapped arm in arm. I saw her myself while she was sitting on Larry's lap. A third witness of one of Haley's former campaign staffers told the Daily Mail that he had no doubt of the nature of their relationships with the two men who claimed to have an affair with uh, her. When she was having affairs, she and her husband were having a lot of problems, and they were on the verge of divorce. There's no question that she and Will were having an affair. Will was not sober at the time. He liked to drink uh, in Columbia, South Carolina. He's a big wine drinker, and they would sit and canoodle, and totally out in the open. Everyone could see it. I saw Haley and one of the men, many other times. Fourth source, a senior political South Carolina correspondent, claimed that these men confessed to him that he had sex with Haley in her car in a restaurant parking lot. In the South Carolina legislature, there are two types of people who believe not enough gets done 
because there aren't enough lawmakers and lobbyists sleeping together, and the people who are holier than thou and say having an affair violates the Ten Commandments, the politician said. Haley's, in, uh, Haley's infidelity was first splashed publicly during her campaign for governor in 2010. So there you go. Local paper had written this up. Well, you know, again, whatever goes around comes around. Yeah, you, you hate to you hate to see it. I don't want to have to do stories like this. I certainly want to like read you what people are saying and let let you be the judge and tell you what I've heard from my from my various circles. But it does really lead to two things that are top line for me. One, uh, Nikki Haley's hero is Hillary Clinton. And now this makes a ton more sense. Nikki Haley is a Democrat plant. For Nikki Haley this Tuesday is a vote for Joe Biden and a Democrat Congress this November, because that's what's going to happen. You can't do it. In Iowa, nearly 50 percent of Haley voters said they plan to vote for Biden in November. Now, that means that she's like a Democrat. She's a Democrat, says Donald Trump. And she's a Democrat, says her donors. This is the quarter before that. So the money train is still flowing and going. Um, are you worried, though? Thank you, Neil, for having me, and Happy New Year. I New didn't. Well. Uh, we actually have a large um, fundraiser on the 30th of January at a major apartment in uh, New York City, where we're raising a tremendous amount of money. Believe it or not, a number of it coming from uh, Democrats. Okay, and we know, of course, Reed Hoffman is the guy who's funding the campaigns against Donald Trump. The lawsuits against Donald Trump, trying to get him kicked off the ballot, trying to get him personally destroyed, and he's one of Nikki Haley's biggest donors, has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with Nikki Haley. And that is why some of the wisest people and some of the smartest people and some of the people who know about these bones in closets are saying, if Nikki Haley is on the ticket for Trump, I will actively advocate against it. Like, I will actively campaign against it. Of course, that man is Tucker Carlson. Uh, one of the wisest sages in all of politics. Trump, if he chose Nikki as VP. And I, would you guys vote for no? Trump? Well, I that's mean, the question that I asked you specifically. Well, I, right. I, I, I would not only not vote for that ticket, I would I would advocate against it as strongly as I could. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I well, that, that's, guys, just, I, that's just poison. I mean, here's someone who's actively opposed to the interests of the country I grew up in, who endorsed the BLM riots, and who is not only is, is not left, but is neoliberal in the darkest most, speaking of nihilist, nihilistic mm -hmm. way, and has no real popular support, is a, is a creature of the oligarchs. So yeah, that would be that would be reason to oppose the ticket. Even Trump, Haley is a no-go. Nikki Haley. He would get assassinated immediately if that were the case. Yeah, I, and by the way, I just yeah, can't yeah. imagine a world where that could happen. That would be so crazy. I mean, anything could happen, of course, but picking Nikki Haley, um, who's utterly treacherous, utterly treacherous well and then we get headlines like this so there you go that's what's being printed i gotta tell you you know maybe this is part of the reason why tucker carlson speaks that tucker carlson doesn't speak like that about many people tucker carlson saves those kind of words for people treacherous i would advocate against it strongly i'd campaign against donald trump if he picked nikki haley these are the kind of uh these are kind of comments from tucker that lets you know that at the very least tucker knows that nikki haley is a liar and an immoral person who stands against the America that we wish to preserve and to create going forward. And so, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's what you get when you have somebody who loves Hillary Clinton, who supports the BLM riots, and who backs every single racial hoax that the left has ever pushed her way. You get somebody who with the same type of morals as the Clintons, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Ladies and gentlemen, like, share, and subscribe for real news and to stay exceedingly incredibly impeccably based. See ya.